Thank you for Zoom calls. There's now a common cold going around, and just as I expected, it's worse than ever before. <laughs> Having not been sick for a year, it's pitiful. Hey, folks. Hey, Steve. Hey. Don't start it, Josh. You'll send us all for coffee. Oh, Josh is muted. Sorry, I'm back. Have you figured out how to doodle time zones, Vincent? Uh -uh. I need to go back and re revisit that. Open that thing back up. It, it, There's a way to say. I, I it noticed confused me because it kept. Huh? It had a time zone on it when I was first creating it, and it kept changing. Like I'd set it to east uh, coast, and then it would change it to Zurich, and it just kept changing it back to Zurich. Uh, so, uh, and it had like an option that was like, just remove the time zone because like every time I open a doodle, it just guesses the time zone that I'm in already. And yeah. I think you have to, were you logged in? I've noticed you had to log, if I don't log in, it gets confused on what time zone to use. And it might just coincidentally default to Eastern. I think that's a good default, but I'm biased. Every time I, I'm driving and the ocean's on my right, I assume I'm going north. So I am still stuck in an East Coast orientation. That's interesting. I never thought about Which Try leaving ocean? someplace on the West Coast, not really, you know, just feel what you, you see the ocean or you feel the ocean on one side of you. And what's your instinctual direction? It's really disorienting. It's actually for me probably to be headed east because I went to Florida so much. And so you'd head down from Alabama to Florida and then east along the coastline. I hadn't thought about that. I just assumed to be a north and south. That's true. If you live on any of the southern borders, I guess this is the panhandle. <laughs> yeah. um, My okay, name growing up was being on a certain side of the highway. And so I would always associate when I'm driving to the highway, if I go right, I'm going east, you know, go left, I'm going west. And then I started living on the north side of the highway and all the directions went wackadoodle. See what we got here. So I'm a little, a little uh, sloppy in the head right now. It's just, thankfully, dealing with a coming on with a cold that none of y'all have to be exposed to has anybody else um, not been sick during covid like for any other reason i have not none of no, none of our crew have been at all like not even a, a, a little sniffle and so as, as it had gotten on like past a year i was saying that very likely the next time i get like a common cold or, um, gosh, heaven forbid, like a stomach bug or something like that. It's just going to be like pitiful. Like, it was almost that. refreshing to just have a cold and just be a cold and it's okay. <laughs> in, one of, in one of the e &M Banks books, there's, it's a, a future where there aren't common things like common colds. And as a trend on a particular spaceship, they go through and decide that everybody's going to try out having a cold. And so they walk around sniffling and everything. And they're like, yeah, I don't understand. Just an entertaining anecdote. How, how um, detached, it sounds delightful. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, even with this, you know, like the first person in the, in the house that started um, feeling a little funky 
you know, it was, it was obviously like achy and had headaches. And it was like, well, pack up everybody. We're going to gonna go get COVID tested, even though like most of us are already uh, vaccinated. It was just rounded up. We'll all figure it out. So, um, let me. Oh, even 10. There it is, the most obvious one. Um, anybody have anything particular that they wanted to chat with, chat through or otherwise? I'm liable just to use all this for discussion. The only thing I would mention is Lately this week, um, distribution distribution has been talking about, or at least I think a few others have been pushing that people need to jump behind artifact spec because they're getting very upset at Docker for um, buildx hijacking the index format. Where is that happening? I think there's an issue in there to stop the first one. Yeah, the first issue there for the invalid manifest. So I've been pushing them that, you know, maybe a better option for this is to get some drive behind artifact spec. And so I don't know how much that rolls back into this on the OCI side, but there are people trying to store things in registries in ways that are upsetting the registry maintainers. This was very hard for us to implement to conform to the BuildX index format because suddenly we started seeing blobs in BuildX and we were dropping blobs all over the place. and. We got customer complaints that this is not conforming. It is a tough problem for anybody who's operating a registry. Yeah, and there is kind of an open question of, is this really conformant to the index? Because index itself says it's a list of manifest and throwing blobs in there is not a manifest entry. But then what's the conformant way to handle that? Okay. Is it to ignore it or to reject it? That's that's the next question. So hold on. You just said something I have a question about, but I haven't caught up in the latest on this. I mean, this is just one of the many examples where, you know, there's general, uh, like, like this, that registries can store various artifacts in a registry, so they don't have to be hidden as a container image, but the lack of it being a spec, the lack of any spe you know, specificity on it has called, caused confusion and inconsistencies which kind of leads you to a spec is the way to resolve consistencies. So basically with this, this part of this thread, at least the part that I read was, how do we handle the ambiguity today? Because there is no real answer. The answer could be like, I have to look at it because I think Buildex uses a collection of things. So I have to go back and look at how it's doing it. But the fact that they're stuffing blobs in the index, which is a, a manifest collection, is broken. Um, various registries went off and did you know, one-offs because we wanted to support BuildX, but that it's not consistent and it, it actually created problems. What they were- at least, how, is it, how is it particularly creating a, um, it, it, so the behavior is, well, A, this is on a Docker district, Docker manifest list, which is strongly they, related to the OCI, but is it- They've since thing? changed that to be an OCI index. Okay. But, okay, good. So then the, um, I mean, you think about it, registries know to look at the index and look for a collection of manifests. If a blob is pushed, we don't actually right. know how to correlate that. So the blob will no. wind up getting deleted. 
the well, different things that you yeah. see. It's we got two sentences Maybe. there, and depending on who you're yeah. talking to, one person looks at the first sentence and the other person looks at the second sentence. Right. Well, this that's what I was about to say. This is the sentence that I was thinking of. An encountered media type that is unknown, regardless of whether it's a manifest in the manifest list or not. That in, the, in an example like this, it's got it enumerates you know some descriptor with a media type that is unexpected effectively unknown for that area and it you know must be ignored if, if you don't know what it is so the, the how you garbage collected or you know throwing frog hundreds or Saje, however you said it was causing issues i wonder if there's the, more to yeah i can kind of describe that so what brandon was talking about you have two options either we reject it or we ignore it we ignored it and when that was ignored what would happen is our GC would kick in, we have a seven day internal GC and the blobs just went away. And then the caches started failing and then suddenly build times were going up like 10 times because the caches all suddenly started failing. So that was the experience. And then we got a bunch of cases from customers, why is our uh, cache misses happening? And it's very hard for them to understand un underlying because we ignored it. Rejecting might have been an option, but rejecting meant that they couldn't use build X. So it's a tough problem either way because the spec doesn't call out that uh, this has to be either rough counted or kept in the registry in some form. Yeah. I feel like your answer there was the right one, which is that you ignored it and that the blob got deleted because the blob wasn't associated to any known manifest. I think part of it is that either one is kind of a bad answer. Like if, if we rejected it, then at least they would have known up front there was a problem. The problem was we ignored it and because it's ignored, it's a passive cache, you know, you don't really pay attention to it because it seems like it's working. And only after a time do you sign it after like debugging, like, why is this not like the whole point is this thing's supposed to be fast and it's not. So you really had to dig in. If this was more descriptive of exact or followed a consistent pattern of what was defined, um, then we could all implement it consistently because basically what we're seeing is like we dealt with ours, Sajay, what was it like a year or two ago? Um, and I think it was, was a digital ocean. I forgot who it was that opened this one over the weekend um, that they started seeing it. So it's just, it's working its way across the registries with a lack of consistency. I, I think there, um, there are more options than just reject and ignore, I think. Um, you can track it like you would a normal blob, the reference by an image. Is, is that not what people do? That's what we did finally. We did end up implementing okay. the tracking. We wound up doing it not because it's in a spec and, and specified that way. It was, hey, here's a bug. Here's a scenario we want to enable. There's no great workaround. There's no consistency, but we know how to unblock it for now. So we just did it. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Is there's no tracking, consistency across registries. Tracking blobs in an image isn't in our spec anywhere either. It's a decision you make as a registry operator not to just let things exist forever or something, right? So I guess in this way, you know, even the word ignored, either either as far as how it affects OCI or you know otherwise. It, at least since the fact that they're using this image and in, index JSON thing is that either this may be ignored, but effectively what it's saying, this, this highlighted sentence is saying that it, anything that's unknown um, may be ignored or effectively um, define the word ignore more is what I'm trying to think. Either may be ignored or ignored doesn't necessarily mean dropping the blob maybe ignored, rejected, or you know, just basically not aired on if you don't know the media type. Uh, but you would want to be able to reject an error on some stuff because we talked, we had that whole discussion of like, if you get media types that well, you, could, you could actually say like, you know, because if, if somebody wanted to end up making like a, you know, service enhancement that you like, we only allow from your authentication that's pushing a blob, these media types, and if you want to shove any other random media type at us, that's a service add-on or something. So it would reject up to the point that your account allows it or something. I don't know. 
Are we so like, really ambiguous on the spec though? Because garbage collection isn't defined in the spec, right? Uh, I think we're going I don't to know, which I'm, which I'm largely okay that, with. If you go to the up a little bit though, like the line above that, like you're looking at the media type on that property, but if you go all the way up to the root where it says manifests, this required property contains a list of manifests that, sorry, let's keep going down, down and that a little bit more, whoop, whoop, sorry. If you go to the manifest property, there you go. It says it's a list of manifests. And what they're doing, if I understand it, they're sticking in a blob. A descriptor, instead of it being a descriptor that's a manifest, they're putting a descriptor that's a blob. But it doesn't say this. I think, I think this is a, a, a Sorry. Yeah, I was about to say, I think this is, you're, you're correct. It does say it requires, oh, it's a required property. Well, it's saying that this, this thing is a required property. And then down here it says it should it should be at least one of these these types of this should say types media types of manifests, but that's that's the part that I was a list of one. It's a list of manifests, and then it says, well, which manifest media types? So today we well we have four. We have the Docker ones, and then we have OCI image and OCI manifest. So my interpretation is of that has always been it's the manifest media types. Yeah, I think I mean that that sentence That's, is non-normative. It, the the media type description is the you know RFC ease bit that I think is describing what you must or must not do, um, which is more open than the non-normative section that says this is a manifest. Yeah, I was going to say, it, oh, let me get the, the, it's funny. So slight backstory that really doesn't matter at all at this point is that I wanted this to, in the past, to just say blobs, either either here and or also in the image index, just to say blobs. And uh, went round and round with Stephen Day, you know, that, that wanted this to only be a list of manifests. and. Um, this is the wording that it came out here, but then when it came down to it of people, you know, like what kind of things could you call a manifest? I could, I could literally put, you know, application slash X JSON or something else like that, in, you know, any JSON document and call it a manifest. But in, the fact the that it is a, a binary an octet stream, uh, an octet stream is not a manifest. It could even be a manifest itself. It could be like a zip, a zip file that includes manifest to be unpacked out of it. But so one way of reading that is that the manifest has to be uploaded in advance on the manifest API rather than the blob API. Uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I've, I've seen that before. So I'm just yeah, throwing that out there. I wish we could clarify that a little more. I think there's a lot of people operating under assumptions that are not shared. Um, so uh, even in the image spec, though, I, I linked to the image layout description, which is an image index. And the example given lists applications slash XML under one of the manifests. So I mean, we at least have one example within the spec of this being not a manifest within the manifest descriptors. That doesn't mean it's not a manifest. I think the difference is there's yeah. two conceptual object types that we store, a manifest that defines things and the blobs that make up the thing. Like that's the fundamental thing of a registry. And we do, uh, I've been calling it lifecycle management because it's GC is just a piece of it. If a customer intends to delete something, there's an expectation there. If something is an income, and then because of the deduping and things, you, you wind up with ref counting in GC or you're uploading or synchronizing content across different registry. There needs to be a way to reconcile if things are in an incomplete state. So GC is just part of that. But the fundamental thing here is there's a manifest that defines things, things that what I've been you know, trying to generalize is what I call artifacts, and then the blobs that make up that thing. When we start intermixing those, it starts getting very confusing on how to do any consistency across registries for customers, not just yep. for us. Which, by the time you generalize that out to where you could address various things and you know address something for its media type that could be you know a zip file of things that point at other things or 
XML or one of our JSON documents all could be manifest some other way to denote this is a thing that points to things versus the actual like root of s or chunk or whatever it is. By the time you make those two things generic and iterate on them, there's not a lot different between this image index and image manifest. It's just one has a little bit more decoration on it or otherwise. Uh, that's, I'm not sure I follow. I mean, the index. Uh, if, if by the time you, if by the time you called this like blobs and then just added another like annotation or field that said, is this a type of manifest? Yes. You know, it's here's a media type and this is a, a type of manifest versus a type of a root of s or whatever this thing is. Um, and, and then once we iterate over kind of on the OCI, you know, like Alexa's V2 efforts, you know, like decomposing things where now these are no longer tar objects and they could be chunks or whatever, you know, like in, you, you see these two paths of like what was the image index and what is the, you know, image manifest. And you're trying to make each of these two things become more and more generic. They start looking a lot like each other. Well, and that is what we've done with the artifacts manifest is that it is just a collection of blobs. Um, well, that that's the one that pivots blobs and config. So config just a list of descriptors. It's a well, it, it actually is a list of blobs in the current one. It's a list of blobs of which one of the blobs could have a media type that is a config. So now you don't have to have separate those as separate properties. It's layers as a as a image spec uh, concept, whether ordinal. Others might have blobs that are different portions of disk. It does, they don't actually overlay with each other. The point is it's up to the individual artifact types to define how they want to represent those. Justin's original larger generalization of it was, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's a collection of things and you can specify what the type of thing is, but it's it just got more complex than we've had time to, to iterate on at this point. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, think, I think I think yeah. I think trying to like point this out, like this is a to have a field called manifest is required. The fact that it says it should be a you know contain a list of manifests, I think, is probably ambiguous and should be just pointed out as an example of types of things that are manifests, examples of things that are manifests, uh, or that it's like this this and the rest of this sentence right here could be clarified of like effectively manifests is something that defines or points to other things um I, what types of other things i i would be happy, it, ar yeah, arbitrary yeah. Things, in fact um anything that can yeah. be described by a content descriptor i i would be happy if we change this to say something like um it contains a list of descriptors and then we talk about how it, the reason yeah. the field is manifest is for backwards compatibility with a Docker manifest list. Um, that would be, like satisfy my. It is, it is a it is a it is an array of descriptors like first and foremost, and it says that here that it has a descriptor properties. But I I think we're getting to the root of the debate that we've been having for the last several weeks. It's this is the very root concept of what we're trying to figure out is if a manifest represents a thing and then the layer the layers or blobs make up that thing and we can dedupe layers awesome um, as soon as we start intermixing them the way that i don't even know how to think about how to start doing life cycle management and the way registries have been implemented today as far as everybody i know has been doing this it is a collection of manifests and it's a collection of blobs Yes, we've generalized the way we reference things as descriptors, which is awesome. But there's definitely a difference between a manifest descriptor and a blob descriptor in the type of content that it is. We cache manifest so we can do cache hits and, and serve the, figure out whether we have to serve different content. Blobs, we mm -hmm. you know, might do CDNs. But to change that is a pretty fundamental, like, yeah, great version. Think about what we want to do differently in the future. But this is a pretty core concept to the way we run registries today. Well, even Thank even you. on the cache versus CDN, it's impossible just to see what the media type is and make a decision of like we know what to do with it. I know that that's that's some amount of processing on receiving it. But if if, if I guess you're saying that the current assumption is anything that's in that list you cache, 
but you're already having to par parse and process that list. I think part of the challenge is there are two different API calls depending on the media type. You have to know how to pick between those two API calls, whether you're hitting the slash blob or the slash manifest. Yeah, I hate that those are different. Um, Awesome. Historical fun. And it's not a huge challenge for the select handful that we've got right now. It just becomes a challenge when you think about future compatibility with unknown types. Well, the problem has just been growing, right? We've never, whether it be Helm or CNAV or others, this is pretty much anybody that's tried to or Push, uh, push different artifact types across different registries, including Docker Hub, um, has hit various different issues because there's not enough clarity here. And it's great that we've gotten to this point, right? This is a, this is a great problem to have. We, we've got so much success with it, people wanna do more with it. But I think this is this is the root of the question is, how do we clarify what, what and how to move forward on this? Which goes to the discussion we've been having about this working group. I think this could certainly be clarified, especially in the context of distribution. Um, I don't know that we really need to change anything, but I'd be open to being wrong. Um, it's just like, I think many people writing clients and registries have, have different models of how this like data like type system works in OCI uh, and kind of getting on the same page for what what goes where and, and how things work is would be nice. I don't want to legislate garbage collection models, but I'm happy to, you know, make sure everyone agrees on some semantics around like, if I upload it through this path, can I access it through this path? Or if it has this media type, can I expect to pull it through a blob or whatever? Um, I don't know. I don't want to be too prescriptive about that, but like, it definitely tripped me up a lot. Uh, but I've kind of either accepted the complexity and justified it to myself, or uh, maybe it is reasonable. I'm not sure. Let's, we should talk about it and maybe uh, run through what you think actually should be changed. Yeah, Vincent, I don't, I think you're, that's a proposal. I don't think, I, I wouldn't agree that it, we should be changing uh, the current index to be a list of descriptors. I mean, that is a fundamental well, change. It's been, a proposal. Been clarified, clarified. I don't think it's a change. I mean, it is more or less. Well, it, I mean, it already it already says that it it it, it already says that it is um, a manifest is represented uh, as a descriptor. It's true, but the first line says this is a list of manifests. And I think rather than linking to the image, that's what was my next sentence is rather than to. Uh, I'll say clarify wording is this. if you want to say manifest descriptors, then I would say that's what the interpretation of what it is today. Descriptors. Um, yeah, but how, I'm just saying, uh, so my, 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 my thing was that had, rather than pointing, because right here it, it's, it shows a list. So if we're going to have a list of media types that at least like it kind of, the kind of things that it should expect, and what are the definitions of what a, a manifest have? A, and it points to the manifest list here. So let me pull apart but, one of your earlier suggestions, which that was that a manifest could be like a zip file that has a bunch of stuff in it, or a manifest could be some other kind of data how would you envision that being uploaded to a registry? Would it go up through the manifest API or would it be pushed to the blob API? That's, and that's, that's, that, was, that was the other part. And point to the distribution API piece of it is like, what are the nature of things rather than referencing the definition of what the specific OCI image manifest is, <laughs> which is just one of these manifests that could be enumerated what is it that makes it a manifest and 
point to the fact that these these things, the things in this list are handled differently. You know, like here's the distribution API for manifests and be like, effectively, I know that these things are different, but like point to that doc and be like, this is why the things in this list are handled differently. And so if there's like, a, you know, a couple of bullet points of like what makes a, a, a manifest, make something a manifest, as far as like it referencing something else, great. Well, it, you know, it, it matters because it hits registry operators, you know, their API differently and their, like you said, cache hits and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Something I heard from the distribution maintainers is that they like to be able to just parse the JSON. So they're expecting it to be a JSON object. They're expecting to be able to parse it and look mm -hmm. for a config and for a list of layers. And if they can't do that, not a, they, which is not a guarantee, that's never, that's never that, that particularly it shouldn't be, guarantee. but that's what they're, that's what they're expecting on their side. I mean, we don't treat these as just arbitrary storage. Like they're, the fact that it's a manifest and then registries choose what manifest they support. Like not all registries even support an index. Only, I, I, there's a couple that only added it even recently. The, and then what we're proposing is yet another manifest they can parse for various reasons as well. But the point is that we look at those in those manifests to figure out, is this a Windows image? Is it a Linux image? What architecture is it? Um, there's data in there, and this has actually been one of the limitations why Docker Hub hasn't adopted the, the generalized artifacts approach yet, is because they are parsing that index um, for information and the manifest, they're parsing both of them. Uh, so to start to say that this could be anything would affect just, a big, I think, just about everybody. It's not that we don't want more things in there, right? That this is the root of the, hey, we'd like to have another manifest that we can start describing things, including a graph. But the idea is the manifest represents what is the thing. And then I have a way to dedupe or, you know, represent a thing over multiple blobs so that I can do concurrent downloads and all the magic of the way registries work. It, it seems to me that if you've implemented a registry that parses what is uploaded to the manifest handler, then there is a finite list of media types that you know are manifests. And so if you're looking at this index and it's not one of those things, then you could know, oh, this must be a blob. But this seems like a kind of tractable problem to just analyze what you're looking at and say, oh, th you know, this must be something that is not a manifest. But, Which is why we were tossing it, because it said it was a collection of manifests. Right, but it doesn't really define that in a normative way. It just links to a manifest, which is like the image manifest. If you were to take that link as gospel, then like you would never support a nested index either. But Well, a nested index is another manifest type. Just and registries right. have chosen to support the in, the manifest or the index manifest types. Like those are two different manifest types that can be uploaded. They not all registries until I'm not sure all of them do today, but index was one that few registries implemented and they started adding. Right, so they they basically would throw. You couldn't just submit something up to it. They would throw because I don't know. What, you know, they would say I don't know what this is. Toss it and like and then users complain. Hey, I want to support multi arc index. Okay, teams go off and do that. They do it by knowing it's an index manifest. They know, do it by knowing how to do lifecycle management. Um, I mean, to your previous one, just to separate lifecycle and GC, I think GC is an internal implementation detail that every registry should choose because it implements a lot of details that is optimized about their registry. And I don't think customers care about the GC. They do care about what, how do they treat the storage if they're paying for the amount of storage? How do they delete? How do they know what's in there. We have customers, because most registries didn't implement delete up front. Then we started having registries, you know, customers that would say, look, you have to delete that. We cannot have storage of that for compliance reasons. So we had to make sure that not only did we soft delete, but we hard deleted. So there's customer expectations around what that lifecycle management is. And then GC is just one of those details. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree that that's important. Um, but the, the point I'm arguing against is like, it seems that you are zeroing, zeroing in on this link to manifest 
and the, the description of the manifests property on an image index. Your assertion is that because it links to manifests, it says this required property contains a list of manifests and links to it, that it can only be manifests. But that links to an image manifest and not an image index. And so I would disagree that this link means anything in terms of a normative specification. I, I, I wish I was, this is why we do agenda items so people know to schedule a time um, to attend because I, I think others would really have a, a strong opinion. About oh, this. fair, but but no, fair, but may, may that's, I? That's literally why I was. That's why I was saying that that the the fact that it links to this this right here is more important. I didn't say get rid of the fact and obscure the fact that it's a manifest. I'm, I'm literally, this is the reason I, I was trying to get that, that wording out of the to do to clarify this. So to actually say what, what even is a manifest rather than linking to the OCI manifest, like that link, literally what, what John was just saying is that that link doesn't serve any purpose but defining actually what the nature of a, this manifest that should be in this list is defining that you know, having a definition of it would serve the purpose that you're talking about steve yeah i'm really confused because i think the, the property is called manifest it's it, the wording says but there's no there's no there's no thing anywhere that says that it's not you know and there, there's no thing that actually says the nature of what a manifest is we only Describe that. Manifest that define it. We have an image manifest, an image index. I don't know if image index has the word manifest in it, but it doesn't. But it's a collection and, 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 of and, manifests. I, but I know, and that's where we say right here that these are the, the types of things that you could have enumerated, like in that type of list of descriptors, you could have one of those things. But if if this thing actually defined what it is that is a is a manifest, that would be something, but it's otherwise very cyclical for it to say it should be a list of manifests and it points to a very specific media type. Like it should be one of these media types and it points to a specific one. And then right here, it almost invalidates it right here. It almost invalidates that because then it says, and it should also have this one. I it think points to this one. The, and the then conversation, it, it, this is the root of how we came up with the artifact manifest was the interpretation of this. So I think if you had Mike Brown, Mike Brown from IBM, supposed to Michael Brown. Uh, Mike Brown, Derek, Justin, probably some of the other registry operators like you know Haley and, and so forth. We this has been interpreted as a registry should support at least the index and manifest as manifest image index and image manifest. Just to, and they treat them as manifest. And here's the media types for those two. The interpretation of that bin is like, well, we can some create other manifest types as well. But there's a right. funny little concept that and we're, and we're, not, and we're not, and literally not saying no to that. And I'm literally not saying no to that. I don't know how. If this is not clear, then let me know how to make it clear. Rather than pointing to that one single specific manifest, saying it should be this thing, instead, just describe what it is that makes up a manifest. Like what the nature of a thing that it should be pushed on the manifest API. Describe it. Uh, and I'm I, I pretty confident that, that Derek and Mike Brown would not be disagreeing with that. Can but, we defer this? I put this on the agenda. For sure. So others can talk because I I'm ner I, I, I'm nervous that the way that's that word is that gets turned into an issue and the, and the spec just gets changed. So, so right now there's inconsistency either way because the index call, so the problem is the index says it needs to point to a manifest, but an index can point to another index. The spec is already polluted and the examples don't align with the specification also. So I think we need to call that out that the example is inconsistent with the specification. Clarification needs to happen. I think that's, that's a separate thing. Um, You're saying this example? Yeah. Because it is not a manifest, and it shouldn't be in that list. Ideally speaking, I, I went well, to and too. at the time when we we created this, and this one particularly, is because uh, the way that even um, flat packs, you know, that the containerized desktop applications, yep. 
they they push they push flat packs to OCI the registries that support OCI, and they they include additional metadata, a manifest of metadata, and that manifest is XML, and it so, is a manifest, and they shove it at different registries. So did it confirm to the link that is the OCI image index? Because in the spec, the first line is it actually links to only support OCI image manifest, not even index. So this is a separate type, right? This is a normal it, index. It, it, it conforms to having, it, it does this one, is that it, at yeah. least it, it must support these. And so it does push an OCI image manifest and it should at least support these. And then it includes other ones. So the first it line assumes, it, it assumes other registries will ignore. Yeah, and the first line is validated that this required property contains a list of that one single type, right? Well, I mean, it, it it pushes those, but this is for like um, no, the, the first implementations that are fetch, fetching, you know, so if Flatpak fetches it, then it knows what to do with this. And if it pushes at a registry, it is, assumes a registry knows what to do with this. So yes, mm -hmm. that's conformant. No, but the first line is inconsistent oh. because the first line says this required property contains a list of manifests, which is only an image manifest, it's not even an index or any other type, right? What Sajay is kind of pointing out is that we've had indexes that point to other indexes. And so where is that captured? If, if that did not link to the manifests page. It links to only the image manifest and not right. the if, if it didn't, I think the interpretation of this document would be very different. We'd have to define what is a manifest. Yeah. And that's kind of the conversation I want to be having eventually. Um, I, I wish that did not link to the image manifest. Agreed. Uh, You're saying this? No, no, the, the first, first line below the blue point. Required property no, can that link out. is the problem there, we see. Correct. Well, is it a problem or is it the way we've it is a it is, is a problem because it, it's because people people have a, a, a for this very reason is that there are other use cases besides even the fact that buildx is shoving blobs in here you know like tarballs that other valid use cases have existed and that's the reason that the wording was besides this particular sentence you know it if this was a if this was a definition of what the nature of a manifest is, then that's fine. Because right here it goes on to say it must at least support these, and it should also support these, and everything else should be ignored. But I th I and think, there's yeah, there's, I think there's completely valid use cases floating around there that 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 are you know use this as a type of a manifest list, but are they OCI oh, wow. things particularly? Not necessarily. I want to dig into the application XML example here because. You're saying there are other people that are using this today. Do they upload that descriptor to the manifest API? And does that also contain other nested objects in there? There are blobs, just like a normal manifest. Is today? If, it, if it does, no, it doesn't contain nested pointers to blobs, but it is a type of a, like application manifest. Okay. So it gets pushed up to the manifest API and the register. Everything self-contained in the block and that everything self-contained in the application XML. In XML. Yeah. And this was the same way that like S bombs and other stuff like this. We investigated this at, at Red Hat mm -hmm. towards the end. We never got around to implementing it. Um, but think, having yeah. having like a you know some other JSON type that we created completely that has all the different you know source pointers and you know uh, build root information, but it was like a manifest of the build of that of those images. And it would be a type of a manifest, but it's not anything that had nested blobs or otherwise. It'd be a self-contained document. Would registry operators be expected to accept that as a manifest? Or is it something that's how, questionable? How and that, that's that's, that's where you could have a, 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 a that's where you could have differentiation of registries or like Say if you know in that, in that use case, if Red Hat wanted to push a manifest that had a lot of the build root information, then they could at least make their own access that Red Hat registry support that, so that their own tools would know how to push and fetch from something that's relevant to their story. But um, would other registries be expected to support it? Probably not. 
Okay. Not unless they okay. wanted, not unless like a Red Hat customer complained and was like, "Hey, I'm trying to Podman push this and it doesn't work." Then, then they could choose to support it or not. Okay, so it's open enough for interpretation from the target implementers, both from client and services, ideally. Right. Yeah. So, so in a, like back, back to the flat back to the flat pack example, just to close that loop. That was like the flat pack developers were working directly with the Fedora, you know, infrastructure people. And so the registry that they were working with, they had a client that was pushing things and the registry side that knew to expect those things, but you know, it was like a valid OCI registry, but it had additional things and it was using this right here. Okay, that makes sense. Anyhow. I, mean, I don't know if it, this is about what reg individual registry operators could do, right? There's lots of things that we can do. We all have various APIs. We, we bolt onto the registry for the, for the gaps that are there. And sure, we can stuff lots of different things in because the spec is fairly thin on, on some of these things. The question is we're seeing, you know, with the explosion of registries, because everybody's kind of recognized they should have a private registry for their own content. There's public registries, there's aggregator registries. Right? So I think as the public registries is two of them. There's software registries like you know, MCR for Microsoft content or Red Hat or IBM or NVIDIA. And then there's aggregators like Quay and Docker Hub and, and so forth. That as customers are trying to, and users of generalized as users are trying to pull content from some of these public registries or build from these public registries and put it into their own environment, there's, there is an expectation that they can move, copy, not yep. move, copy content between them in some kind of consistent manner. <coughs> So the same way I can copy files to a USB stick, like the USB stick doesn't implement a different API. So not, not the best example, but uh, <laughs> USB I was trying to find an example of copying a file from one thing to another, but a USB doesn't have an operating system. But, but the point is, is that there needs to be some consistency to, to copy content across, which is what we're looking for the specs to provide, you know, that standard so that tooling can build things, services can build things. Um, but I don't think that precludes if the customers choose to go down an untrodden path, it doesn't mean that all the specification needs to handhold them, right? There's a choice that they make that this is not something that is there in the spec and they're choosing to do that. Being able to move all content that is not within the specification doesn't, it's probably not going to be possible. Uh, for example, there's no way that they're going to be able to access the XML manifest from a registry that doesn't understand XML or cannot push to. Um, choosing no, that's the, fair. I think, the I think choosing that, outside the subset should not be is, is a different aspect to this one, but um, getting consensus of what is a minimal part of the spec is probably what's challenging here because the manifest list itself is not even an accepted form in the current set. Yeah, I was trying to say like the approach we've been trying to take with the artifact stuff is let's have a generic thing that can define things. I mean, a file system API has a set of APIs. It doesn't know or care whether it's a Word document, an Excel document, you know, a Golang file or whatever. It just says, I know how to persist content in this store. And then it's up to the clients to decide, I know what to do with that content. So how do we create a very generalized way to persist things in a registry, both from what the, the APIs for what I've been thinking of as a manifest that says, here's defines the thing, and then here's what makes up the thing. But the registry is pretty stupid about, it doesn't care whether it's a Helm chart, singularity, build X, whatever. It carries a property that allows it to inform, by the way, this is you know, a Helm, this is a, a CNAV, this is a, you know, a singularity, a, a scan result, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the registries don't need to know about that. The only thing the registries would need to know is how do I persist and, and pull, push and pull um, generic things? And then the clients can decide what they want to do with it. Then we have full lifecycle management because we know how to manage it and so forth. And then the idea is the image spec, the helm spec, the singularity spec, the scan results specs, they all say, hey, of that generic manifest, I say you must have an order, like let's take the image spec. The image spec would say, I must have a collection of blobs, there must be at least one, and the blobs are ordinal. And by the way, one of the blobs has to have a config media type. That would be the image spec because it would say, this is how I use this generic manifest. The Helm spec would say, hey, I only have two blobs. One is the chart, one's the providence, which is without getting detail what, the, what they're yeah. using as providence. S bombs might say, hey, I'm an S bomb and I can refer to existing things. So the point is like, if there's a generic manifest, then 
individual artifact types can say how they dictate that manifest is used for their scenario. Then registries can be stupid and clients can be smart about their type. I'm on mute now. The, the, you know, I see Mike, you joined at some point, you're, you're quiet. You'll probably, yeah, have to, you'll probably have to go back and watch some of the discussion just to have a little backstory. Um, the, no. the, um, the, Babies be nice. Call them up. My head is swimming. Okay. So what's the gist? Looks looks like you're you're proposing that instead of it being a, a list of manifests, it's a uh, it's list just of a little scriptures. it's a little bit of it's a little bit of circular trying to figure out. So in in basically some of the conversation that's come up through this link list, the link issue is that we're getting to, I guess the confusion around the fact that this right here says it should be a list of this particular manifest and that points to a specific media type. And down below, it, you know, it says that there can be a couple and that everything else should be ignored. And for now, it, we even, it's reserved, we even, yeah. It's not even reserved. It's just like there, we have use cases where other people are shoving other stuff that are types of manifests. They just should be ignored because they're not. If you're a container runtime, you should be able to safely ignore them, and that's fine. And if you've added additional functionality in it, and that's fine. So rather than linking to that specific OCI image manifest right here, rather than linking to that specific OCI image manifest doc, then it would be more helpful to right here give a definition of what the nature of a type of a manifest is and, it, and, and possibly any kind of guidance of like if you encounter something that's not one of these you know one of the known media types that we already have then what happens if you like uh, Sajay said that they had done at some point where they ignored it and it meant that they later garbage collected and dropped any, any of these ignore, ignored or unknown media types and it caused issues. Um, anyhow, so ra rather than pointing to a specific a single implementation of a, what a manifest is, describe the nature of type things that would be listed there. That's all. Yeah, and I think the ignored phrase there probably should mean different things to different people. If you're the runtime that's trying to execute this thing, ignored should mean you don't try to execute it. But if you're a garbage collector, maybe it means that you at least see if there's a descriptor out there and do your best effort. But yeah, I think the ignored makes sense from a client. It doesn't make sense from a registry. So I think that's the client and the service side of processing of that is what it becomes a little ambiguity. But and I'd also say, you know, based on the wording we we're just saying, I like I like the idea that you're saying it it it's a list of manifests, but let's define what a manifest is. The thing I was objecting to is saying- It's a restricted to a list of descriptors. Yeah. Like today, there is, a, there is a concept of what a manifest is. There's a couple of them out there. We're trying to propose some new ones, but we never actually defined, there's no hard definition to what a, describes what a manifest is. And the fact that uh, Buildex is trying to stuff blobs, which clearly aren't manifests in the manifest collection, that's what's triggering this conversation. It, it is a little bit, I mean, when I say restricted, Vince, I mean, it, clearly it says in there that, you know, it, it, it's a restricted descriptor type, right? Where the media type has to be one of these, or at least one of these, I guess was the point. And I, and I guess the part where it says at least is a little confusing. I could see where 
Yeah. Yeah, what it says is that the registry server must support, but it doesn't say that you must upload that specific manifest type. You could put a different yeah. type if you wanted to as a client. I, I think at least my interpretation of this, and granted I wasn't in the original group that created these docs, so they, I'm just one of the many that came in and trying to interpret this, is for a registry to be a container registry, it has to at least support the image manifest. If you want to support the index, if you want to support the artifact, if you want to support Joe Bob's random manifest, then you can. It's completely consistent. The registry has to implement it. it. You know, there has to be a client that knows to push it. But to be a registry, you have to at least implement the image manifest, and then everything else is optional. But there was a collection of manifests that we just never defined what exactly mean what is what a manifest is. Correct. That's that's a good way of saying it. Good, good, good. That's a good discussion. These are the kind of hairy, hairy, hairy topics that sometimes, after me personally having four or five tabs open, uh, I wonder what, what the issue is, like where the confusion is, and would have dismissed it as not a, a, an issue. And there's always Josh for the Go Bob's random manifest the king of manifests what was the uh marky mark so there's, there's always some other name so um look it was a couple of minutes left i think this is a great topic to queue up it kind of is the root of a lot of the conversations we've been having lately so if we can put this yeah, good. The was there a context and, to it were you guys trying to extend the use of it from platform oh, it's, it's something else or it, I think it's because, yeah i was about to say it, it came up from uh, Brandon was saying that the distribution distribution issue there at 3452 is kind of surfing it, surfacing it due to issues of how BuildX is pushing stuff. But <clears throat> the way that we've just rolled it back even kind of gets to the fact of like how if manifests are being used in a certain way and it's not, you know, like almost like the, the the last thread that I need to reply to about the working group and defining like what things live in image spec or otherwise. Yeah, I think some of this starts like uh, could get, could get clarified and could kind of shake out in interesting ways. Yeah, and what BuildX is pushing is not an image in this case. They're pushing their cache, and so they they don't expect anybody to run it with a runtime. And so I think that's why they went a little different and out of the norm. You know, Vince, in, in hindsight, I think if we had done the distribution spec first, it might have been easier. Yes, sir. Because we would have had a place to run the test cases and validate stuff. We, I know you guys yes, sir. did, did some, a lot of work on the image spec, you know, for the schema and test. If but that wasn't if really you'll good. also remember that that was proposed very early on and was shot down. In a I know. I remember. Of, yeah. <laughs> I remember why it was so, shut down too. Uh, let's not bring it. So we, 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 we specified yeah. what we could specify and eventually distribution sure. spec came around. So I so, guess the, the only issue then here is when we change things, I think it's, it's, it's okay to clarify with respect to the distribution API, but it is going to be tricky to, ch to change what it is, or maybe it's just better description. I mean, the it's, description it's was better sort of description. Made. Yeah, I yeah. think better better description, and then it would give us flexibility like this to even figure out making sure that we don't, you know, operators don't mess up workflows and stuff like that. That's, yeah, we we can good. tighten it, but oh man, I don't want to lose backward compat. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Good, yeah. good, good, to, good topic. We're right at the top of the hour, so this is a good cool natural stuff. stopping spot. Um, uh, I think we can we can queue up a discussion around this, and maybe it just needs to go from this HackMD to a issue either on the probably not on the distribution spec, but probably on the image spec. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so sorry, I was late. I had a surprise visit with my, my granddaughter. Just oh, so nice. Uh, congratulations. Best, best visits. That's awesome. Yep. Very good. Good. All right. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Take care.